morning. I'm gonna, I probably should have left this muted while I attached it to myself. Uh, oh, no, there we go, there we go. I thought it was marking over once, okay. So, this one goes up here. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, okay. And then, I've done that wrong. I feel like I'm in the place. <laughs> How are you guys doing this morning? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Alexander and Omer and Late Night. Uh, I hope you have a good day at work, Norma. Hmm. Hassan and Lava. Carlos. Okay, so I... Where's me a little bit of my morning people? Oh, that's hot. Um, we are making today... From the Wild Cookbook. Uh... Eggnog. Eggnog. We're making eggnog. And we're also making shortbread, which is not from the Wild Cookbook, although there is shortbread in the Wild Cookbook. We, we made that already. We're branching out. Um, just because the eggnog doesn't have a whole lot going on in it. So, uh, you know, you got to keep busy. I have to get back to work. Have a great stream, Hazel. Thank you, Norma. Hello, Hazel. Good luck with you today. Thank you. So, the eggnog. Well, should we start the eggnog first? I think I was supposed to put the butter out for the shortbread. I think I forgot. So I'm just going to put that up now. And then when we get to actually like mixing it with sugar and flour and stuff, if it's still too, if it feels like it's going to be a problem, then I can um, microwave it and be lazy like I normally am. Og, og day. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's take out the butter. We're going to need a cup of butter. Okay. I don't know if you can tell when I open my fridge. You can only kind of see in there. But I cleaned that yesterday. Whenever I get really like not super upset, but like if something's worrying me, if I'm stressed about something, you can, something's getting cleaned. Like it doesn't normally get cleaned, like the moldings or the cabinets or like behind stuff, underneath stuff. All right, there's a cup of butter. Oh man. Um, is it me or the sound low? Oh, uh, it sounds bad and the lens foggy. The lens should be fine. It looks okay on my end. Um, if the sound is bad, we can work with that. Convinced it's using the right mic. There we go. There we go. Sorry, wrong mic. <laughs> I, 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 I swear I checked. Uh, stress cleaning. Yeah. Hey, Hazel, first time joining you live. I love your videos. Thank you, Judy. I love the shirt. Thanks. It's uh, it, it drapes better when I haven't pinned it down with an apron, but um, we're not terribly worried about it. It's really hard to worry about anything before like lunchtime, anyways. So um, I took the butter out, and now let's take a look at our eggnog recipe. Ugh. All right, so it's the very last one in this book. If you're ever looking for it, it's the very, very last one. Uh, Winter Veil vale eggnog photo looks like that, very pretty. Uh, they always have the most like wonderfully staged photos in this book. They give me really unrealistic expectations. So this is very, very, very fattening. <laughs> it includes whole milk, sugar, eggs, heavy cream. Uh, a little bit of vanilla, and then some rum and brandy, all of which we have, because, you know, if it tells me to spike it, I'm going to spike it. Um, so we're going to start by combining three cups of whole milk and one cup of sugar in a large saucepan. I'm going to get the biggest one that I have, because I made this last year. I made this last year. It was a long time ago. I think it was pretty good, but I remember that as the milk and things heated up, um, milk tends to expand and is never too far from, like, a really bubbly, frothy disaster. So we're using a real big... Um, Real big, real big one of these. Ah. Also, before I forget, I'm gonna clap a bit just to um, help me figure out how off the sound is later. Um, if that's really, really off, I can adjust it right now. But I swear these things are always pretty close when I'm doing sound check, and then they're mostly okay in the live stream. And then I go to um, to clip the vod later, and it's like super out of whack. But then I check it like eight hours after that, and then it's fine. So I don't know. Um, I made muffins yesterday, but I misjudged the amount of blueberries I needed. They ended up being a blueberry explosion in the oven. Oh no. Yeah, blueberries are scary because they're basically tiny bombs. They're filled with liquid. So when they heat up, they tend to explode anyways. So I can definitely see how that would happen. Okay, so I'm measuring at three cups of whole milk. Um, I should probably use a liquid measure, but who has time for that? And then one cup of sugar. Actually, I, seeing as I have this out, I may as well do the sugar first. And then we're going to um, combine them in a saucepan. We're going to heat it over medium heat and we're going to whisk in six eggs. Six. Quite a few eggs. Although I guess it is eggnog. It's not, otherwise it would just be nog. Greetings from the UK. Hi, Lewis. How are you doing today? 
I guess I can I can measure these things a little closer over here. This is not gonna is it gonna fit? It's not gonna fit good. Oh, I was gonna um, weigh this anyways. Eh, this is, this part isn't baking. I feel like a couple of grams of sugar either way is not going to ruin my life on the eggnog. On the shortbread, we'll we'll weigh things because we have lots of fun with our handy scale. But for this one, I'm just gonna kind of like there's a cup of sugar. Yeah, that's so much sugar. Have you ever made homemade eggnog before? What's up, Randy? Um, we did this, well, I did this last year um, for Christmas because I think that was right after I got the, the cookbook. I remember I made cookbook recipes exclusively, wow cookbook recipes, for the um, for a Christmas dinner that I hosted. Well, hosted, there were like three people. Uh, whole milk, whole milk. So I definitely tried this last year, but it was quite a while ago. I think I remember it turning out pretty good. It didn't taste quite like what I had expected because, you know, you go your whole life drinking grocery store eggnog and then, you know, it's still eggnog. It's just different. Uh, sound is good. No lag. Perfect sync for me. Okay. All right. We're sticking with this thing. We're sticking with this and I'm not going to mess with the VOD because last time for the last one, I actually ended up having to download it and then re-edit it. Like I actually had to take the stream completely off site. And I don't think it was actually that bad. It was only bad for like a bit. I don't know. I may have made it worse. <laughs> Editing audio sync is always a bit rough for me because I use wireless headphones, um, which have audio lag of their own. Okay, so one cup of milk. Man, two cups of milk. I'm really excited to get this kind of like going so that I can, I guess I have some tea left to, to drink, but then I want to make more. This is, this is the, the time of my day where we do the tea inning where we go a little hard on the caffeinated stuff just to kind of get moving. I guess 10 o'clock is pretty late. Depends on how early of a start you got. All right, so there's three cups of whole milk, one cup of sugar, and then I need to be whisking in six eggs and I need to not lose count over medium heat. So I'm just gonna grab my whisk. I have a large whisk, it's kind of plastic. It's vaguely melted. Uh, oh, there's a lot of sugar in there. It's kind of sludgy. That's what you want. Get that rolling. Medium heat. And I'm just gonna start, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be smart. I'm gonna do the thing that my home ec teacher wanted me to do like 15 years ago. I'm gonna crack the eggs in a bowl first so that if I explode it and get like a bunch of shell or if there's just like demons inside, then I can get them in this bowl before I immediately dump them into my three cups of whole milk. Oh, hi Hazel, what's up Gasly Games? How are you doing? You got a 960 chest from your weekly a second ago, came to YouTube. For comfort, this will do, oh, you mean like a chess piece, like something that you can't wear? Because I got, I had that exact same thing happen to me like an hour ago. I opened my chest. And I got gloves. And I'm now walking around with four pairs of gloves. Because I have my old tier gloves, I have my new tier gloves, I have some 960 gloves, and now I have some 950 gloves. And I'm not a Shavara. Do I look like I have eight hands? So... I'm just walking around with all of these, all this stuff in my bags. It's, uh, it's not the greatest. I haven't gotten a thing I can use for my weekly cash since um, Antorus opened or before that. It may have been since I stopped reading Team of All right, so egg number one. We're not splitting them. They're just going kind of wholesale in here. Egg number two. Try and stand up straight so I don't get such a sore back after the baking stream. I'm blaming it on my counters, but I also do tend to kind of like fold over a little bit. It's a consequence of being both addicted to Animal Crossing and uh, playing a lot of WoW. Oh, four eggs. It's raining. If you guys hear any weird, like, spooky noises. Oh, God. Five eggs. It's, um, it's pretty stormy outside. Also, if I randomly disappear, it's because the power went out. My power's been kind of flickering. It's really windy. And it's raining like, you know, cats and dogs. Like, really, really rough rain. Um, and I was walking my dog this morning because nothing stops that. I mean, that's what raincoats are for. And I have these boots specifically for walking the dog when it's like really rainy. I bought them. They're like hardcore outdoors boots. I just really wanted boots that would not let any water in because my last boots were supposed to be waterproof, but they did not hold up to Portland rain. And uh, these boots are warm and they are definitely waterproof, and they fit. Like, my feet, like, when I'm actually wearing them, they're the right amount of, of tight on my feet. But, um, 
they're like really tall and they have a zipper and a lace and like by the time you've got them properly on it feels like you're wearing ice skates it feels like you can't bend like they're very stiff and i can't really bend my foot at all so i'm like penguin walking down the stairs and uh they're my feet stay dry but i'm not 100 percent convinced that it's an improvement I'm gonna be fair with you, I'm only here to see if you're going to make a mess and laugh a bit. Don't worry, it's not mean, I just love clumsy people. <laughs> That's a legitimate reason to watch my streams. Did you catch the one last Friday where I spilled an entire one of these mugs of tea all over myself and had to change? Also, I feel bad because I was cutting bits of the VOD out where I wasn't there so that people that were kind of re-watching, oh man, that's weird. Um, so the people were, that were re-watching didn't have to sit through it but I, I missed the longest part where actually when got changed. I'm gone for like three minutes and there's like nothing happening. <laughs> but, you know, it's YouTube. You can skip ahead. It's fine. <laughs> all right, so basically we're just going to whisk this until it's all kind of incorporated. Right now I still have... This isn't a very sharp whisk. It's very... It's plastic, so it's just like a big plastic whisk. And it's... um. I've got like some little bob and egg yolks in there that are like not breaking. I have them. Um, I have an electric mixer. I actually have an immersion blender and I have a hand mixer and either one would probably do a better job at this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, cause I don't think I'm doing this right. So let's put this in the sink. Let's grab the, the immersion blender is probably easier cause I can just like kind of plug it in and then go beep, beep, beep. This one, this guy. I got this specifically because I like making vegetable soup, but I like making like smooth soup, so I'll just like make a vegetable soup and then I'll put like whatever butter or cream in and I need to make it taste like food and then I'll just like blend it all together. Works out all right. I'm still, after all these years though, I still haven't really nailed the ratio. So sometimes they're a little too thick and it's kind of like eating potato pudding and sometimes it's just watery. <laughs> I wish I had more cameras that could like float because this looks kind of cool and you can't see it at all. All right, well that's blended. <laughs> that's close enough. I don't think I'm supposed to over blend it, but I also don't think it matters that much. Ah, we talk amongst ourselves. <laughs> true, true, true. Uh, I would like to see Kitty video start. Kitty video start. Kitty, if she comes back here, I'll pick her up again. She was in here at the very beginning, but I was doing something else. Uh, Hazel, that's so whiskey business. Are there any unique Christmas traditions that your family did when you were growing up? Oh, that's a great question. Unique Christmas traditions. Um, we had kind of a silly one, not growing up necessarily, but when I was in my teenage years, young teenage years, my, my nuclear family kind of split apart. Like, there was just, there's people went their separate ways um and it was it just got bizarre but the and then like in the same year like my grandparents were like and they usually hosted christmas dinner they're like we're going to hawaii bye <laughs> so it was just my mom and me and my sister i think and we had a couple of years like that where n nobody was really hosting christmas dinner and we we're like well we got to do something so we just ordered pizza and uh that was kind of like a like a not a growing up tradition but like a teenage tradition is me and my mom and my sister or sometimes, I think at least one year it was just me and my mom. We just ordered pizza on Christmas, and that was and that was good. And I was always very grateful to the people that were making pizza and delivering it on Christmas. Like, I mean, I guess I was partially responsible for creating a business for that, but that was kind of nice. Um, when I was, like, younger, like, little growing up, whenever my grandparents did host, um, which was most years, I'm kind of exaggerating how many years they went off on a cruise, but they, um, they would host it at their place. So we would wake up, we'd have waffles. I would bug my mom to make me waffles love waffles and she would uh she would she would make my sister and i waffles we would probably wake up like way earlier than them and we knew we were not allowed to wake up our parents and we were not allowed to open any under the tree gifts until after breakfast but you could open your stocking whenever you woke up so my sister and i would wake each other up like really early like really early <laughs> and we would get up and like hang out in the living room and open our matching stockings that had the exact same thing in different colors because we're two girls that were like very similar in age and uh and you know, wait for our parents to wake up, have some waffles, open some under the tree gifts, go to the grandparents, and then have some gifts to the grandparents and have Christmas dinner and like 
take a nap on the couch, you know. We would always play Scrabble, always play Scrabble um, at my grandparents' house. Uh, when I was little, I used to win. I always win at Boggle. I sometimes win at Scrabble, but I have an uncle that's just crazy at Scrabble. Mm. Can you go look for your glasses so that the cat comes and takes over the stream? Can you have a hard time getting within camera range? Like, sometimes you can see, like, a reflection. Oh, I'm supposed to be stirring this. Sometimes you can see a reflection in the fridge. But, um... She's presently somewhere else. Okay, so I'm supposed to keep stirring that. Actually, I should read my recipe. I've kind of gotten distracted. Um, cook for 10 to 15 minutes, whisking all the while, whoops, it is, uh, until the mixture has thickened appreciably, and then we're gonna remove from heat, strain into a clean pitcher or bowl, add cream, vanilla, rum, brandy, and then chill. So that's pretty much the whole plan for that. I think you're just supposed to keep whisking it so that it doesn't get like a skin on top, because it is very much a, a dairy thing. I uh, hope these cookies turn out good. How has your morning been so far? Welcome, Brandon. My morning has been all right. This has been like all of it so far, to be honest with you. I mean, I woke up like a couple hours ago, but mornings kind of slip by me, you know? You walk the dog, have some tea, make the, like, the list of all the stuff that I want to do during the day, and usually 60% of it gets done. And uh, I'll put my Mythic cache, and then spend about 90 minutes getting ready for stream because it takes me a really long time to move all this stuff in here and then clean my kitchen to pretend that it looks like this all the time. It doesn't. Mm. Uh, hey, live stream, big work day. The support queue has been super slow today, too. I feel like a lot of things, like some businesses, will really slow down this time of year because people are taking time off and they're with their families. And then some businesses, like retail <laughs> uh, and mail, I would assume, like mail delivery and then retail, go crazy this time of year. And I so glad I don't work retail. Um, what's your most memorable present that you've given and received for Christmas? Also, can you do a Michael Bublé Christmas stream? What is a Michael Bublé Christmas stream? Like, I know who Michael Bublé is. I'm, I'm familiar with his music. My mom was a big fan at some point. But, um, you mean, do you want me to sing? I feel like I'm really scared of doing anything musical on, on YouTube because I'm really terrified of copyright. Like, just deathly afraid. Uh, hello from Denmark, just popped in. Okay, so the most memorable present that I've gave and received. I need more tea. Um, I always want to give people really crazy presents. Like, I always think of ideas of something that they would really like, but it's usually something that either A, I can't afford, or B, if I could afford it, I probably shouldn't because, like, the friendship is not at the point where you're supposed to be spending that much money on a gift. So, I do remember... Um, as a teenager, like a young teenager, I was so excited to get my first boyfriend rock band. Like, he didn't have it. He was like an actual guitarist, and he played a lot of video games, but for whatever reason, he didn't have his own rock band. Like, we played it at other friends, but we, he didn't have one. And I was like, oh, man, I'm going to spend, like, $40. I'm going to get him a whole big thing. And I was, like, so excited to give that present. Um, as far as the most memorable one that I've received, it's really hard to pin anything, but I know that I, because I'm looking at it right now, um, last year my husband got me this, uh, this, the KitchenAid, and it's like a really nice model, and I wanted one forever, so I'm just, I'm pretty happy about that. Copyright, take all your monies. His Christmas album is fire. I just want to hear it while you swim in the bubble in Stormwind. What a strangely specific request. Um, hey, are you excited about the scaling leveling? I am. I'm probably not going to do, I'm going to do it once. <laughs> I'm going to level one time to re-level my priest, like my new priest. I'm re-rolling my new main to a void elf, and I'm doing it from scratch so that I can get access to the heritage armor. But, um, then I'm done. I have enough alts. And I'm not doing, like, Project 60 or anything like that. Uh, after you mentioned your dog breed, I showed my boyfriend, we looked up a bunch of click eyes, they're derpy and adorable. They are derpy and adorable. Um, they're also, you have to be kind of ready for, and maybe mine is just like special, but they do have kind of a husky temperament. They can be very aloof. They can get very, I mean, at least mine has really awful separation anxiety. And um, a lot of energy. Like some people assume because it's a small dog, you don't have to exercise it, and it's not even true. It's not even close to true. I can walk that one twice a day and he's still bouncing off the walls. And they can get really destructive and unhappy if they're not exercised enough. But actually, right now, he's being super cute. Let me see if I can just, like... All right, so you're going you're gonna to look. There we go. There we go. Sorry, my kitchen's kind of messy, but look at the dog! In my kitchen, I mean living room. Oh, there's a cat over there, too. What is on the floor? Oh, that's cat food. Okay. 
<laughs> There's your Hazel and Games apartment tour, real quick. But they're just being they're just being cute together. Oh, you get your Globe Yeti yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got one actually for the Winter Vale video that I did. The, vi the video probably could have come out like two hours earlier if I had not decided to stop and camp at the Globe Yeti so I could actually show the process of getting one and then like show its stats and everything. All right, so now this has actually gotten like warm, so I'm gonna set a 10 minute timer because, oh no, that's one, whoops, I these. 10 minute timer. And that's about, I mean, until it thickens appreciably, whatever that means. I feel like I did this last time, so I should know. Um, I'm also gonna get my strainer and my pitcher ready. So I wanna put it into, I have like, way down here, make sure this is clean. Yeah, I use this for iced tea and then egg dog, and that works real good. Should we start the shortbread? I printed off my shortbread recipe. It should be like really easy. It's got like three ingredients. I'm probably gonna add some salt because it doesn't call for any salt and that scares me. And some of them say that it's bland, so I might add like half a teaspoon of salt at least. Um, I just printed this off on the internet. Normally I wouldn't print things, but now that I wanna weigh things, I've started having to write down, until at least I memorize the ratios, I'm writing down the exact volume to weight conversions for flour and sugar anyways. Okay, so preheat the oven, beat the butter and sugar, stir in the flour, um, roll them out, bake them. Pretty straightforward. I want tea though, I need some tea. We're gonna hang out for a little bit. Like we've only been streaming for 20 minutes and we're like most of the way done with the eggnog, which is kind of why I wanna do cookies. I'm probably just gonna like, let this, like I'm gonna finish this while making some tea. And then we'll do the cookies. I don't think, I don't know if it's gonna chill enough for me to drink it. I think you're supposed to chill it like all the way. I think warm eggnog might be kind of gross. I don't know. It's like egg and cream with a lot of sugar. Uh, but yeah, we're hanging out, we're chill. Um, don't add salt. Why not? I feel like my other shortbread recipes had salt. Hazel, I cut my finger cleaning a candle warmer this morning. Oh no, we can be buddies. I have like a scratch right on the knuckle of my index finger and I know I should put a bandaid on it so I stop bending it and opening it again, but I don't want to wear band -aid. Um, a candle warmer, a candle warmer. Aren't candles naturally warm? What is a candle warmer? Um, happy holidays, Seth Last Slayer. How are you doing today? Hazel, you inspired me to play Gnome on my Shadow Priest. Welcome to the good side, Garrett. The side with extra haste. Oh, speaking of Shadow Priest and like races and Void Elf stuff, the purple hair is happening. I have ordered the stuff for the purple hair. I am planning on doing like, so I've been obsessed for the last week um, and I think I just need to do it so I can move on with my my life because my brain is just like really fixated on exactly how I'm going to do it. Hello. Um, but I have been oh, obsessed this last week with watching videos of people bleaching and dyeing their own hair at home um, to try and like figure out all of the things that I want to not do and all of the things I'm going to need. And uh, meow. This is my baby. <laughs> this is my favorite cat. I don't know if I ever say this enough, but I love this cat. This is the best one. Oh, there you go. Oh. Um. Oh, that's starting to thicken. I'll do it a little more, but we're only like three minutes in since it started to get hot. But I was heating it for a while before I started the timer. So I'll give this like another minute or two. And then we might be in straining time. It's very frothy. It's a very frothy mixture right now. Also, I'm just going to be straining it through my little flour sifter thing, because that's all I have. That actually might be a horrible mess. I need to be really careful with that. If I spill this on myself, it's going to hurt. This has got a lot of sugar in it, and it's got a lot of fat, and that means it's going to kind of stick to your skin if you get it on yourself, and it's really hot. So we'll be very careful with that. Um, why are you playing a gnome? You look so tall. You should be a drone. I am pretty tall. You know, fantasy video games are about sometimes being something that you can't be in real life. Um, growing up, I was usually fairly insecure about being tall. Um, I wanted to be one of those, like, not short, but like average height, kind of like cute, pixie, like huggable women that people like pick up. And I've since realized I would really dislike being picked up. <laughs> but I, I wanted to be—I wanted to be shorter because I, uh, I just—I felt like it wasn't very feminine to be tall. And as an adult, I've kind of grown to really like being this tall. I can get whatever I like. I can, I can reach things, you know? And uh, I can eat more than a very short person could and still maintain a reasonably slim figure. And, uh, all right, so this is pretty thick. I think I need to take that off. 
I feel like I was going somewhere else with that. Oh, yeah. But, you know, sometimes it's nice to log into WoW and just be like itty bitty for a little bit. Although I'm going to be a Void Elf, which is going to be like mid-height. Void Elves have nice tentacles in their hair. That's all I wanted to say also for the horn test to the childhood. Uh, thank you very much for the donation. Mies, uh, ZHD. I don't know if I agree with your sentiment because like Anduin is my boy, but uh, <laughs> appreciate the support. Okay, so this is the part where I'm gonna try really hard not to burn myself. So we have strainer, we have thing. I'm gonna put this in the sink. I'm gonna put this in the sink. I don't anticipate spilling anything, but I just wanna be confident. All right, so that's, oh no, that's too slippery. I need to put it somewhere flat. We gotta do it somewhere flat, okay. Right here, just like that. That is pretty stable. This is coming off the heat. Give it another good stir. Um, I think I just need a two hand, I think we just need to do a two hand pour. I really wish I had another hand to stabilize this thing. Oh no, we're okay. We're all right, this is, this is gonna work. It's so frothy that it's gonna take a minute. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, Kitty, I know, I made a mess. I just poured it too fast is what happened. Um, it kind of overflowed through. It just, needs, it just needs time to like, are you still dripping? Get in there, <laughs> get in there. It's, it's like not straining. It is a liquid. Kitty, what's up? Are you attacking your cow? I got her this little tiny like crochet cow when I was in Canada and she just murders it. Like it gets stuck to her paw and that's how she plays. She'll like slap it, it'll get stuck to her paw. Okay, I don't know what she's got, but she'll slap it and it'll get stuck to her paw. All right, this is not even, are you even, how are you, how are you so thick? Oh, there we go, there we go. We needed a, we needed a, a more of a wiping motion. Um, and then she'll just like fling her paw around until it gets unstuck, which will fling it in the air and then she'll go chase it again. It must be really fun to be a cat. She seems very entertained usually. Okay, so that's a lot of it. We have, we have more. I think I may have thickened this too much actually. I think I may be having too much of it. Like this almost looks curdled. We're still like, we're straining it. So it's not gonna be like a super crazy texture. What's it? Oh God, that looks like cottage cheese. Oh boy. Um, we're working on it. Hazel, your cat might be a feral druid. I made an orc and there's no hiding sense in it. Anduin is my boy. Anduin is my boy. Can't wait to play Iron Dwarves. It's going to be awesome. Nice, nice. I like tall women. Uh, believe it or not, the first time I run Tempest Keep with my new demon hunter got the ashes of Alar. I'm shocked too. Wow. Just try making wow recipes. This is a wow recipe. Thick. Your, your cat might be a feral druid. Oh no. Yeah. This is pretty thick. This is like thick with two C's. Um... Is it still going in? I'm concerned that, um, so what's gonna happen after this is I'm adding uh, two cups of heavy cream and then some vanilla, some rum and some brandy. And if I don't have enough of like this mixture that makes it through the strainer in there to balance it out, then it's gonna be pretty alcoholic. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm kind of a lightweight. I had two glasses of wine last night because I have this open bottle of wine that I'm trying to finish before it's not good anymore. I don't know much about wine. I don't know how long that takes, but it kind of wrecked me. <laughs> this is so, I, I think I overcooked this. This is so thick. Kitty, is this thick? <laughs> oh man. You have a stain in your apron, that alliance symbol. Man, when I started reading your comment, I was a little bit concerned because I just washed this. Doesn't it look like, like shiny and blue? But I realize what you're saying. Oh, I had a pet bunny and a cat in my house. And the first time they met, my cat slapped my bunny in the face. I would be so scared with a cat and a bunny. Like I would be really afraid of the cat hurting the bunny. Like you can have the sweetest cat in the world, but I still feel like that's a, that's a, a risky situation. I guess if they grew up together or if you're just really, like you supervise them a lot at first until you're sure that they're fine. All right. I don't know if I would ever keep a bunny myself. I have a friend that has a bunny and I enjoy visiting and petting said bunny, but it doesn't seem like a pet that I would want for myself. 
Okay, so we're getting there. We're getting there. We almost have all of this through. And, uh, oh dear. <laughs> that doesn't, it smells very good. It does not look good. <laughs> it does not look good one bit. Let's get that soaking. Uh, the night before my 21st birthday, I had like half a bottle and felt like I was melting into goo. <laughs> Rachel, I feel you. My life. I have, um, on Friday, I have an office party to go to. My husband's, clearly, I don't have an office. Um, and I feel like it's, it's like open bar or like drink tickets or something. There's going to be alcohol there, and I feel like I'm going to need at least one drink to talk to all these people that I don't know and try to explain to them what I do when they ask. But I need to not have any more than that. <laughs> I've been, like, trying to drink not all the time, but just, like, a little bit more regularly than once every other month just to try and build up a little bit of a tolerance so that I can have a glass of wine with dinner without, you know, getting really, 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 really giggly. Has not been working so far yet. Okay, this is... Is it... Are we... Are we accomplishing anything here? <laughs> I'm gonna need like many, many, many different cloths to clean this up with. I guess I'll start making the tea once we get like the cookies rolling. I feel like stuff is dripping. I think as much of it is dripping onto my counter as is dripping into the pitcher, but that's fine. Uh, I tank, I like to control situations, provide a service. Life makes you feel like just another brick in the wall sometimes and it's not always meaningful. I can see how tanking would be a good thing to do if you had that if you had that feeling. I've definitely felt like that before. Not a lot lately. Um, Hazel, how is Heroic Antora so far? Can't wait to kill Argus and get the magical purple bird. Same, same. My buddy pugged Heroic Argus on the first night it was available and has been like riding his purple bird in raid ever since. But I don't have my nymph. We are eight. We're eight of eleven. We killed Veramathris. We did not kill Coven. Um, I think we're going to kill Coven fairly easily once we get to it with some fresher people. We were pretty tired by the time we got there last time. But I don't know. I think it's going to be a week or two on Agrimar and then Argus. For sure. Okay, this is about as... Are we... Is anything else? Yeah, no, it's kind of dripping. I guess I just got to keep with it. <sighs> this is the messiest thing. What was the biggest mess we ever made on a baking stream? Was it the... Um, was it the cake pops? Those were pretty disastrous. I'm trying, trying to think of if anything else went that badly. I know I burnt some chocolate sometime. Like, I actually had charred chocolate from the microwaving it. All right. All right. I think that's as good as that's going to get. So I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to give that a good stir. I'm going to get some... <laughs> try and clean that up. And then we'll add the things that we need to add. A candle warmer melts a candle, releasing its scent without fire. Oh, interesting. I've never heard of that. The bird is pretty cool. Got it the first week, but now a lot of people are having it, so it's not that unique. Yeah, that's going to happen, though. It's going to happen. There's always going to be common and uncommon mounts. And I think it's good for cool ones to be in both categories, because not everybody's going to do the things that are super uncommon. Like, there's... Is there not a mythic Antorus mount that you could go for if you were, like, really looking for, like, a raid mount that, like, nobody has? Speaking of raid mounts, I don't know if I actually said this in so many words, but I got the, last week on Hounds, I got the mount to drop for me. I know I, I rode it around in the, um, I rode it around in the Wintervale video, but I don't think I ever, like, said, whoa, dropped, whoa, yay, or some other Mario-like sound. All right. Oh, it's pretty warm. Pretty warm. All right. Make sure at least the outside of it is mostly, oh, I need to rinse this. <laughs> Hazel, what do you mean in Overwatch? I'm very much a filler in Overwatch. I will play roles that other people don't cover. Typically, um, tanks or healers. I prefer to play Roadhog, uh, you know, Zenny, Mercy, Lucio. I don't actually like playing Lucio. I just do it in competitive because I know he's easy and I won't let people down. Or at least he's easy the way I play. <laughs> Roadhog is probably my favorite tank. Um, if I have to be a DPS, like if there's no place for a tank or a healer, I will usually play Soldier 76. But uh, if I can get my hands in the Hanzo skin, then I'm probably going to be a Hanzo main because he's looking nice. Oh. But yeah, mostly healers and tanks. Um, actually got the mount that drops from the puppies. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. The Antoran Charhound. I completely missed in all of my previous discussions of this mount 
completely slipped past me that it had wings. I guess I was just expecting it to be like a miniature version of the boss. And the fellhounds definitely do not have wings, I'm pretty sure. I'm 62% sure. So having, um, when I got the mount and I got onto it, I'm like, what are these things? And I like got out of the raid and I started to fly around. I'm like, dang, this dog can fly, which is cool. But I will say that the wings, like the elbows are so like high up that um, he doesn't fit through doors. He's one of those mounts that doesn't fit through anything. Like if any mount is gonna get stuck in, a, in an elevator or like in a gateway, it's always a bit of a balancing act to fly through the balcony window that gets me to my order hall portal as a priest. Okay, so we've, we've officially cleaned that up. We have a jar of that thing. So now we need to add cream, vanilla, rum, and brandy. So we'll start with the cream and the vanilla. Where is my vanilla? That is, ugh. I organized the fridge, but I have not tackled my cupboards yet because I'm terrified. <laughs> Stress and press, thank you. Establishing dominance over the other Norwegian. Uh, who do you think will burn Teldrassil? I feel like it might be the Forsaken that opposed Sylvanas in the new comic. Can't imagine my bae doing that. Um, I think we have like 70% odds that it's Sylvanas. And I'm putting 30% on Jaina. Um, I have Jaina trying real hard to start a war and doing something really drastic. Uh, I think that would be an interesting and compelling story twist. I don't think they're going to do it. I think it's probably going to be Sylvanas or something of, or, like around her people, like you said. But I think it'd be neat. And don't get me wrong, I love Jaina and I love the tree, so I would be pretty grumpy with her for that. But it would it would be it would add some dimension to her storyline. Although it would probably also add fuel to the whole Jaina's crazy debate. She's not crazy. She's just got feelings, man. Hazel, any chance you'll stream Void Elf leveling? I would really like to see you derp around on a Void Chicken. I don't know if I'll stream leveling. Um, I'm going to marathon it, depending on when it comes out. Depending on when it comes out. If it comes out as a pre-order bonus, which I am fairly certain it probably will, then... I don't know, maybe? Let's go with a maybe. Maybe on like a Friday stream. Okay. And one teaspoon. So something I wanted to ask you guys, now that we're like here, because I've been streaming for a while. What time is it where you live right now? Like, what time is it? And I, 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 I want to know. I'm trying to feel out if I was going to add, if I ever managed to get my life together enough to add another stream, and I wanted to do a morning one so that people from Europe, it wouldn't be the middle of the night for them. I want to get a feel for what exact time frame in my local time I would do that for to kind of like make it accessible for more people. Okay, so there's there's the vanilla. Jaina is my woman. <laughs> uh, okay, 1840, 1139, 1138, 138, 138 p.m., 11 a.m. It's 1.40 in Quebec. 1.40 right now, same time zone as you, same time as you. Okay, 6.40 p.m. So what I'm kind of thinking, 7.30 p.m. here in Belgium, so I'm, what I'm kind of thinking is like back an hour from now, or maybe like an hour and a half. So like 9.39, like 9, 9.30 a.m. my time. So like an hour and 40-ish minutes ago, an hour and a half ago would be a good like starting time, right? That's probably about as early as I'm going to be able to get on and actually be function. Okay, so these are both about one cup each. Um, so I'm just going to put all of this in. I'm not going to really bother measuring. Are they one cup each? They should be. 473 million. I guess I'll measure. I guess we can measure. Uh, here we go. Brazil. Happy holidays, Hazel. 11.40 a.m. here. Welcome, Matron. Where are you from, Hazel? Uh, I am from uh, British Columbia. I'm from British Columbia. I'm a Vancouver Island girl. I am living in... Oregon, near Portland, America, United States of America. My time zone did not change though. My time zone has always been Pacific West Coast time. I've never lived in a different time zone. Ugh. It kind of works out nicely for WoW stuff because it's like blizzard time. A lot of things work around Pacific time. So it works out. All right. So this should be about one cup. Oh no, it would have been too much because that's like one cup and it's not the whole thing. Good to know, good to know. So there's one cup. Oh, I only need one of these. I was about to add twice as much cream as I needed. Whoops, it easy to do. That's why we measure by volume. Okay. So there's the vanilla and the cream. So let's just give that a good stir. 
And then we need a quarter cup of rum and a quarter cup of brandy. Um, and I'm not going to omit that because I'm assuming that it has some kind of a preservative quality. Like this is going to live in the fridge for a couple of days, not forever, but like a couple of days. And I feel like having alcohol in it will help keep it from going off. I don't know why I think that, but I definitely think that. Okay, so that's good. That's good and stirred. This one is empty. This one did not need to get opened. Uh, Blizzard time is a better name for the time zone. Alberta, Canada here. My wife is from Alberta. You guys get, um, I mean, I guess it depends on where you are in Alberta, but I've heard that, like in Edmonton at least, you guys get really harsh winters, right? Like really harsh winters. Because I've considered, like, if I ever had to go back to Canada, I've tried to consider, like, where would be a low cost of a living place where I can still get reasonable internet, which I don't think exists. What am I doing? Brandy and rum. Brandy and rum. All right. That's brandy. That's rum. Quarter cup of each. One of these. Uh, hey, could you bake my shortbread? I will leave you my eggnog everywhere. Alcohol is toxic to bacteria. Thank you. Something like that. <laughs> Something along those lines. No one on my server wants me to have the Yeti. Everyone grabs it before me. Aw. You'll get it. You'll get it. I bet it'll be a little bit easier to get as time goes on. Uh, make sure that you're using the target macro and then the interact with target keybind. Um, you can do the thing that I did and bind those to two keys and just alternate them, um, especially if you know that it's going to be up soon. Or um, something that one of my friends did was actually bind those two things to his mouse wheel. I think one was up and one was down, so we could kind of just like do like a record spinny thing on the mouse wheel, and that would alternate between those two things to to uh, get it. All right, so there's a quarter cup of brandy. Oh no, sorry, that was rum. This one's brandy. <coughs> I probably won't be sampling this on this morning stream, because I still have stuff to do today. And there's the brandy. All right. I kind of want to clean out, like, the top of that pitcher that got all, like, frothy and foamy. I want to make this look a little bit prettier, so I'm just going to take clean paper towel. Get this out of here. And I'm just going to, like, all right well that's not perfect but that's a little better okay and now we officially have one large picture pitcher <laughs> smells like smells like alcohol of father winter Vale's eggnog uh i need to wipe up the counter again but that eggnog is done time to make some tea and shortbread these can go over here for the next time I decide I'm ready to mix some ill-advised drinks. Got my scale out here. Actually, I should probably do some dishes first so that I kind of start with like a clean slate. Um, I got the Yeti first day. Great, Jonathan. I can testify the mouse wheel method works well. Good to know, good to know. We have almost a meter already. Oh, snow. We haven't seen any snow here this year. It's been cold and it's been rainy, but never at the same time. Um, I love the snow. Uh, I forgot from one shadow to another. <laughs> I can't even say the whole thing. Soon we'll return home to our true master's embrace. Thank you, Stress and Press. I appreciate that. Um, and thank you very much for your generous support. Um, all of the super chats, they help me a lot. Like, you guys would be vaguely shocked to find out what percentage of my income comes directly from things like Super Chat and, and Patreon. Um, clean, I'm, I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning. No, I'm making tea. I'm making tea and then I'm cleaning. Oh, so something um, that my dagger says to me a lot is whenever we go over Surmar, she's like, huh, this place, Ace is fine. It's fine, you know. It's nothing on the black city of Neolatha, but it's all right. And I'm like, Black City of Neil Otha. Like, this is some Lovecraft stuff that I need to see. I really hope. Like, they've been teasing Old God Expansion forever. Well, not Old God Expansion, but they've, like, had Old God stuff in so many of their different stories that I feel like eventually, like, you know, this was the Burning Legion expansion where we get, went and, like, dealt with the Burning Legion. I think it's entirely possible that at some point 
in the not too far future we get like a very much old god focused expansion and i dearly hope that a zone or a raid or both is that that black like i want like a black underwater or underground lovecraftian like sort of gothic themed completely different um i want i want to visit the city of neil i think that would be so cool especially as a shadow priest but just like for everybody uh, it's pretty, and I feel like it's Christmas soon. It is Christmas soon. It's less than a week until Christmas. Oh, yeah, so, uh, so uh, tea is on. This needs to chill. I think it's cool enough now after the stuff, after the uh, cream and then the brandy. So I think that can just go in the fridge. It's not, like, hot. I don't think it's going to heat up my fridge. And then get all this cleaned up. And then we'll start on some tea and shortbread. <coughs> nice kitchen thank you I'm just renting whenever I do eventually move our kitchen is probably gonna take a severe downgrade and that's fine but this one's pretty nice it's got a good amount of room and the appliances are right they're probably pretty good um, some of them are too smart for their own good and I know this is a very first world problem to have but the stove has like a temperature sensor and if it decides that it's too hot it's gonna scream at you. It's gonna beep and beep and beep and beep and beep, like really shrilly, very loud until you reset the breaker, like, or until you cool it down, but you can cool it down all you want. And it likes to do that while I'm in the middle of cooking something, and I know fully well that the thing is not finished cooking, that it's okay to broil something, and that um, it's fine, and you just have to put in earplugs and keep going, or turn it off and be like, well, I guess we're not eating salmon tonight. It's uh. I, I, if I was ever buying my own appliances, I don't know if I would buy that particular stove. Um, I need an apron hazel every time I use flour. I end up looking like a ghost. Aprons are great. Aprons are great. Aprons are fun. They're actually really easy to make. If you have done any sewing or you want to do any sewing, an apron is a really good first project. And then you can kind of pick out like your patterns or your colors or, you know, what have you. You can, you can do whatever you want. I think that was one of the first things that I made in sewing class in school. Or at least the sewing unit of home ec was I made an apron. Hazel, what did you get your husband for Christmas? I can't spoil it. <laughs> what if he watches the stream? I don't think that he does, but what if he did? Uh, what are you guys' plans? I don't think we have plans. I think we're going to stay home and hope the weather's okay and maybe walk the dog. And then it's otherwise going to be a, probably a pretty quiet day off. I can't afford to go fly to visit my family like I want to. Um, I don't think we have any plans with his family. We might invite a friend over. Um, it's going to be a pretty, pretty quiet, pretty quiet Christmas. Uh, Getting on. Happy Tuesday. Welcome, Tail Spinner. Thanks for dropping by. Okay. We have made some Father Winter's eggnog. We have put that in the fridge to chill. And now I am cleaning up some dishes and making some tea. And then we're going to make some shortbread. I guess I should preheat my oven. Uh, 350. Shortbread is going to be pretty straightforward and basic, but we're really just kind of like dragging up the clock so I can hang out with you guys. It's not like I am in a big hurry. I do have stuff to do today. I'm just procrastinating. I had a bunch of stuff I was supposed to do yesterday, and I didn't make it through as much of it as I wanted to. I was going to put out a video yesterday, then another video today, and I have, like, nothing <laughs> for either of them, so I'm just going to do what I can. Um, how do I see how many nuts you have? You want to type exclamation point nuts. Uh, all one word, and the bot should tell you. You can check every five minutes, but it's not going to be a big difference. Big difference between those different things. Going back to work. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, Charles. Thank you for coming. Hi from Chile. Welcome, Chris. How are you doing today? All right, I'm making holiday tea because I have to drink this one by myself because it has almonds in it. So uh, it's got a red tin. One of these is going to be red. Red tin? Red tin? There we go. Red tin with like a spooky looking Santa dude on it. Pretty spooky. Whew. Goodness, I am not going back to bed. Staying awake. I'm up. I'm up. What is your favorite pasta sauce? Ooh. Pasta sauce. Um, Alfredo. Alfredo. I can get on board with a good thick tomato sauce. Um, I enjoy when they have like mushrooms and, ch and vary varying types of cheese. But uh, I am a sucker for a good creamy Alfredo, especially like a slightly jazzed up one, like a garlic Alfredo. Maybe they all have garlic in them. I don't know. Um, Get me like a garlic alfredo pasta with like some seafood, like like a like a good shrimp linguine. That's pretty much my my holy grail basic restaurant meal. 
And most places make it, so. And it's usually good. I've never had a bad, like, seafood pasta. I guess if the seafood was bad, then that would be not a good start. But I don't have high standards. I don't need it to blow my mind. I just need it to not be rotten. Okay, there we go. Tea. Do that for like three, three and a half minutes. This tea has like, that's closed good. This tea has, um, why would it not tell me the label? It just says black tea with fruit and spices. I know it has almond as one of them. It's got like these pretty little red leaves. Color doesn't necessarily come through in this camera, but. Oh, okay, that's gonna be good. Um, for the shortbread. We're going to beat together butter and sugar into light and fluffy and then stir in flour until smooth. So I have my one cup of butter. It's, it feels softer to me, but last time I said that and it turned out to be not nearly soft enough. So we might microwave that for like eight seconds, 10 seconds. Um, is your gingerbread recipe up anywhere, Hazel? We recently got really cute cookie cutters and I want to break them in. Yes. So if you go to YouTube and you search Hazelnutty games and then gingerbread cookies. I actually made a video, like a not a, not a stream, a, an instructional video, detailing exactly how to make those gingerbread cookies. And in the description of that video, the the full recipe should exist. So that's where you find it. Your apartment looks exactly like Nan Hazel. You live in Chattanooga? No, no, I live near Portland, Oregon. I, I don't live in Seattle. I visit Seattle sometimes, but I don't live in Seattle. Alfredo is super easy to make. Garlic cloves, diced butter, cream, Parmesan cheese, the good kind, salt and pepper, and some flour for thickening. I have not mastered the, 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 the white sauce with the roux. I've made it a hundred times, hundreds of times. And it's only ever okay. I haven't really perfected the consistency, and maybe it's because I'm cheaping out on cheese, because I have a hard time spending a lot of money on, on food, especially if I'm going to be cooking with it because there's always a chance I'm going to ruin everything. But it's never, it's always all right. It's never amazing. Ugh. All right. There's this one place, if you're ever in, if you're ever near a Cinetopia, it's a movie theater chain that's in the Pacific Northwest. I know they have a couple of them in Washington. They have a couple of them in Oregon. I don't know if they have them in California or not. And I don't imagine that they have them off the West Coast, but it's like a movie theater chain that has all these different types of theaters. And some of the theaters have like full restaurant service. Like you can order drinks, you can order restaurant meals. They will bring them to you while you watch your movie. Um, they have different theaters that have like different types of seating. Like there's a couch. Um, so you can like cuddle with your date or whatever. Um, they're really nice theaters. They're kind of expensive. It's actually really expensive if you want to eat and get a drink. But if you're looking for like a, like a really nice date that's still like a movie, at that restaurant, they make this mac and cheese. And it's ridiculously expensive for a mac and cheese. It's like 20 plus bucks. But it's like a huge serving of mac and cheese, and I swear it is the best mac and cheese I've ever had. And I know it's because they're actually spending money on real cheese. Like it includes, uh, I think it's got some Gruyere in it, and just, it's, it's, it's so good. I've never been able to recreate it, and I don't have it in me to go and spend like the 100 plus dollars it would take me to board my dog and get a movie ticket in that particular theater and then order food. It's just not happening, but sometimes, I've only ever had it once, but sometimes I miss that mac and cheese. And that probably means I should never go back, because sometimes I've had like that experience where you have something really, really good at a restaurant, um, and then you go back to have it again like a year or two later, and it's not nearly as good. Like whoever made it last time doesn't work there anymore, or they don't have the same ingredients, or it was just like a fluke that they made something so magical that one time. And then it's just, it's just a letdown. Like it's forever tarnished in your mind. So maybe I should never go back there and have it because maybe it's only okay. <laughs> okay, so there's butter number one. You know, this is pretty soft. It's like already kind of like, I had this out for a while. I don't think I need to, I don't think I need to microwave that. I think it's been out for like, I took it out at the beginning of the stream. How long ago was that? Like half an hour, an hour? Your apartment looks exactly like mine. Um, I'm pretty sure these are like mass produced apartments. They're fairly new. I don't know exactly how new they are, but they're less than 10 years old, I'm pretty sure. And uh, it's very, it's very, very copy paste. I want a house really badly, but I live in a very nice place and I can't complain. Um, 
Nice apron for the Allies. Thanks, Michael. I love vodka sauce or pink sauce. What is pink sauce? I've heard of red sauce, which is just tomato sauce when you don't want to pronounce all the syllables of tomato. Uh, but I've never heard of pink sauce. The wind gets like howling through these buildings and the fan above the microwave spins when it gets windy out there and it'll like hit the end of it spinning and, and make a kind of like a, you, you can probably hear it. You can probably hear it in my microphone. It's very spooky, it's very spooky. We had like one Halloween where like the power was going out and that was happening and it was just a very, very spooky time. Okay, so there's butter. That's not the right recipe. I can put this one away now, we're done with this. We don't need this anymore. Hazel, how did you get your cat? Well, Martin. Um, I have, if you want, if you want like the whole super sappy story that includes, um, footage of Kira as a kitten, I have a video. Um, I think it's called Kitten Vlog or Kitty Vlog. Um, so if you, if you Google Hazel Nitty Games Kitten Vlog, you should find the video where I actually talk about exactly how I got my cat. But the short version of it is, uh, three or four years ago-ish, on my birthday, um, I was cat crazy. Cat crazy. Super badly wanted a cat. I wanted one my whole life, but it kind of like came to a head after I had a place where I could actually get a cat. I was dying for a cat, love cats. And for my birthday, uh, my husband surprised me by taking me to a cat shelter and we picked out a kitten together. And then I had a cat. <laughs> and I got the best one, the very best one. Uh, beaten butter and sugar. So we need, need half a cup of sugar, which is 99 grams. So it's time to do some weighing. Also, my tea is ready. I need to pour some of that. I need to not break anything. I'm never fully in control of my lips. Lamb sauce? Oh. Don't people put mint on lamb? I don't, I'm not a person that would eat lamb, so I wouldn't know. But don't people put mint on lamb? Okay, so tea. I'm gonna have that with a little bit of milk. Pesto with cream makes for an amazing sauce. That's a pretty good idea. I like making basil pesto in the summer because I like growing basil. It's very easy to grow. And whenever you grow basil, especially if you have a really sunny place to put it, it gets huge. Like it grows really quickly and you have to pick it all the time to stop it from going to seed. So it, um, so I always end up with just like huge amounts of basil. And there's only so much basil that you can put in your tomato sauce when you're making pasta or like in bruschetta. I like making bruschetta too. There's only so much of that you can use, and I end up with like just like this salad full of basil. I'm like, well, I guess I'm making pesto. Loving the hair in your plows. Looking fierce, girl. Thanks, Jeremy. Will Allied Races be available in 735? It has not been confirmed yet, but it is strongly likely. Don't think they'll be out till BFA. Pesto is the best thing in the world. Um, Sir Ramsey will be enraged. I recently saw um, a Wowhead tweet that on the 735 PTR, they've added allied race emissary NPCs to capital cities, which to me seems very much like a place where you would go to start recruiting them in the, I think they're gonna be a pre-order bonus. It's not confirmed. Um, it's not confirmed to be true. We don't actually have official word, but if you ask me, I think we're getting them at 735. I think it would be very unfair for them to go, yo, if you want this cool armor on your new main, you gotta roll it and level it from level 20 at the same time as everybody else. Why am I looking in my fridge for sugar? At the same time as that everybody else is like leveling to 120 or whatever it is we're doing this time. Okay, how's this tea? Is it good? Pesto and caprice for every meal. You're gonna need level 110 character on the server to make one. Yeah, I, I, I haven't heard that, but it sounds true. <laughs> I would not be surprised. And it sounds like something that maybe I did here and I've forgotten. Okay, so we need a medium bowl. And we are going to even out our scale. So we're going to turn this on. Put the bowl on there. And then zero it out. Come on now. There you go. All right. And then we want 99 grams of sugar. I'm pretty sure, let me triple check. 99 grams of sugar? 99 grams of sugar, okay, yeah. Uh, the missions might be there in 735 or 735 is battle. 735 is not gonna be Battle for Azeroth. Battle for Azeroth is going to be patch eight point something. Um, they always go up one full number for expansion releases. It's always been like that, always been like that. 735 is most likely going to be the patch where they um, 
they open up pre-orders. I don't think it's going to be the pre-patch with the systems changes. I don't think we're going to be seeing, um, like, I don't think we're going to be seeing class changes in 735. Um, that is much more likely to be in, like, the actual pre-patch that they release, like, a month before the expansion comes out. But I think that 93, I don't know. And I'm hoping that they do the pre-order thing like pretty early to keep people playing and to give me lots of time to be a Void Elf. Because I don't really need the Battle for Azeroth stuff right now. I just want to be purple. Uh, oh, that's 100. Too much. Too much. Still 100. 97. 98. 99. Perfect. All right. I love being like, if I'm going to have a scale, I'm doing it right. I'm going to be the most precise person that ever lived. Okay, so there's my 99 grams of sugar. Ooh. Ooh. Doop, 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 doop. And we're going to mix that up. I think there's going to be an achievement you have to do before you can get an allied race. There's definitely a quest line. You definitely have to recruit them individually. Me and my husband can't wait to be able to pre-order. Yeah, if they... Like, that's going to be such a fast buy for me. Because, I mean, obviously I'm going to play Battle for Azeroth. And if it lets me be a Void Elf, then basically, like, gimme. Okay, so that was perfect. That was the right amount of softened butter. I'm really glad I didn't actually heat that up anymore, because that is very creamy. I'm going to just scrape this off the sides, mix it a little bit more, and then we're going to start mixing in flour. Okay, so that's, that's, the, butter and, that's the butter and sugar. Uh, and now we just need 240 grams of flour. So I'm just going to start measuring that into that sample. Favorite type of cookie. Oh, tough. Um, favorite type of cookie. I am... I actually really like shortbread. Actually, no, you know what? You know what? My mom makes these. I need to get the recipe from her, but I can't make them because I can't give them to my husband and I can't eat a whole batch of cookies by myself. But they include... Um, it's like a sesame seed cookie. They're like beige with like toasted sesame seeds in the outside. And they're like kind of crispy and kind of chewy and they kind of taste like sesame seeds and I swear they're amazing. I know it doesn't sound like a dessert thing, but those are definitely my favorite cookie. Um, I'm also very fond of shortbread, but... All right, so what did I say? How many, how many grams did I say? I'm never gonna remember this. 240, okay. Do, 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 do. There is 60. We need to, this is probably going to be a fair bit. 128. 158. 193. So Animal Crossing Pocket Camp just came out with an update. 234. That added gardening. And I was sure that it was going to be just like the most magical thing ever. Because I really enjoyed um, farming in Black Desert Online. And it seemed like a very similar thing to that. But... It's so tappy, and I know it's like a tappy phone game, that's the whole point, but it's just there's so many inputs required to just like do a thing that I almost, I almost can't, it's, it's kind of killing my pocket camp desire. Also the fact that I've recruited all of the available people and I'm like capping on resources because I don't have anything left to craft. I'm working on crafting like the special requests, but you don't unlock those all right away. I'm just gonna add this all at once. Let's, let's live on the edge. Okay. We get that good mixed together, and then I think we just roll it out. I'm gonna Google if it's okay to add salt to shortbread. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google it right now. So if I look like I'm staring at you, it's because uh, I am. Add salt. Yeah, I think I can just throw a pinch of salt in there. I think it's gonna be fine. I think that. Well, actually, you know what? You know what I'll do. You know what I'll do. Let me um, check. I think I lost my chat. Where's my chat window? Oh, there it is. Um, also, that doesn't look like dough. That looks like fluff. I don't know if there's enough liquid in this. I was going to say, let me check the wow code for the recipe and see if there's salt in that one. Oh, maybe I was supposed to mix this by hand. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> uh, my least favorite spec for Priest? 
um, is disk. I don't really understand disk. I've never made the effort to understand disk, so I just kind of pretend it doesn't exist. Moist shortbread. Uh, thank you, Google. Someone needs me for a PvP match? Have fun, Bryston. Bryston? Bryston? Bryston. Good luck. <laughs> My babies. I'm not really planning on having anybody's babies. What type of tea are you drinking? I am drinking sweet tangerine. Ooh, that sounds good. This is a holiday blend tea, so it's like a black tea that includes some almonds and fruits and spices. It's kind of a Christmassy thing. Oh yeah, I was gonna add a pinch of salt. I'm just gonna like... There we go. Done. Problem solved. So let's move that over there. Get this under here. And I'm gonna roll this all out on my cutting board. We're gonna uh, bake them on this. Oh, it's all out. Bake them on an insulated cookie tray that has been lined with parchment paper. I'm Scottish. We invented shortbread. It's okay, totally okay to put a pinch of salt in there. <laughs> Thank you, Nisbert. I appreciate the input from an authority. I don't know. If I ever look like I know what I'm doing, I'm probably lying. Okay, all right. Parchment, I'm gonna keep this out because I'm probably gonna need that for rolling. I have this. I have, let's get this off of here. I think this will come together once I start like squishing it. I think I just need to incorporate the butter better and I don't think that this paddle was gonna make that happen. I think it actually told me to do it with my hands and then I like forgot. Or chose not to read that because it sounded like a lot of work. Uh, I nearly miss a stream. Welcome, fall, fallen, fallen Sammy. Fallen Sammy. He didn't miss it all. We're just making shortbread. We made, we made, I mean, you missed the eggnog portion of it, which is really a lot of me making a big mess. <sighs> but I think it's all right. This is, we're trying to get some shortbread dough. Very, very, very crumbly right now. This doesn't really look like dough at all. Eggnog stream. Welcome, Tree Town Frog Person. Did I say that right? Tree frog tempers, and I'm, my apologies. How are you doing today? I'm making banana bread. Better butter is a tongue twister. Better butter? Better butter, better butter. My least favorite drink to make as a barista is the eggnog latte. When steaming it, it sounds like the gates of hell opening up. Oh, are you like a Starbucks barista or is that in like another coffee place? That, I know a lot of places do eggnog lattes. That makes me feel bad because I really like those. <laughs> I think that's my favorite. If I'm having a Starbucks holiday drink, the eggnog latte is my favorite one. They're all good, and at home, I don't know if I've seen this around before, but around here, but um, the gingerbread, there was like a gingerbread latte, and that was really good too. But, oh, also, I need to pick a shape to cut these into. Uh, let's, let's grab them. I'm gonna pull out the star. I felt a little bad for not using the star for the gingerbread last week. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna bring it out, let it have its moment in the sun. Oh no, this will definitely roll, this will, this will roll. I, I should have gotten my rolling pin out before I started this. Though. Pretty cool looking arm tat, what is it? Um, the one that you can see there or the one on the other side? I guess you're probably talking about this one. It's a cherry blossom tree. There is an imager album with more clear photos that you can access by looking in the about section of my YouTube channel. Um, I have a link there that you can copy paste if you would like to see more, um, better quality photos of that tattoo. Okay, uh, I should have gotten my rolling pin out first. I'm a Starbucks barista. Yeah, I didn't want to assume. I've always been very impressed by Starbucks baristas because it seems like for a, for a, like a, like a retail-ish job, it seems like you need to know how to do a lot of stuff. How do you feel about snow? I think snow is very pretty to look at. Um, I love, I used to, we used to have this, growing up, we had this house that had this huge bay window and there was like a big maple tree out front. Um, and then like forest all around and it was we would have like Christmas lights up in that maple tree and then you had like a good view of just like you could see trees were pretty far and I used to love sitting by that window and watching it snow especially with like some hot tea so it's very pretty to look at however and, and fun to play with like we had a big very big um, very steeply sloped driveway like it was basically a very miniature ski slope so we would go sledding down that oh this is all falling apart we would go sledding down that on like these crazy carpets, which are basically just pieces of plastic that somebody decided to market as a sled. I don't know if this is really gonna roll. I think this is more of a padded out kind of thing. Uh, I'm gonna try. It's, it's kind of falling, it's very soft and it's kind of falling apart. Also, I think I need a quarter inch thickness. This cookie cutter is gonna be too big. This is a huge cookie cutter. This is so sticky. 
Uh, I guess I just need to dice with my flour. I feel like I've done something wrong. I've never made this particular recipe of shortbread before. Uh, maybe I'll just cut squares or circles. I want little circles, but I don't have a little circle cutter. I guess I have a cup. I can cut them with it. That's a big cup. I want like a little, yeah. <laughs> Get, pull out the spaghetti factory cut. There we go. That's what I want. That is the size of shortbread cookie that I desire. Because then I also, I also want to, uh, before I bake them, I want to add a little tiny piece of maraschino cherry. Because that's how my mom makes them. Ugh. And what is the holiday, what are the holidays about if not pretending that you know how to do all the traditions that your family did, but when you're alone. Okay. There we go. Yeah, yep. Circle, circle, circle. What are you guys saying over here? Cocoa or coffee? Um, hot cocoa before coffee, but tea before either one of those things myself. Uh, you love the holiday hot cocos? Actually, I do miss um, Tim Hortons hot chocolate. Like the flavored, like a peppermint Tim Hortons hot chocolate was a favorite this time of year. And nobody else does it quite the same way out here. I haven't found a, I haven't found a place that makes hot chocolate quite the way that I want it. The Starbucks one is just not, I've tried. It's not quite my cup of tea. Um, although maybe that's because I ended up having a lot of it during one holiday season that was just a really bad holiday season. Um, and now whenever I have Starbucks hot chocolate, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to be here. But yeah, I miss, I miss Tim Hortons for like a really quick, inexpensive flavored hot chocolate. That was like my, my jam. Oh, or their steeped tea. I used to, I used to get Tim Hortons steeped tea on my way to work. And it, it's like, it wasn't even, it's not even as good as the tea that I make myself. It's just the fact that somebody else made it for me, even though I'm paying them to, for whatever reason, that's very heartwarming to me. And the employees at the Tim Hortons that I frequented were always like really friendly <laughs> and really nice to me. And uh, I miss that. I miss that, that friendly, meaningless interaction of being nice to people. I think snow is a four-letter word for reason. Oh yeah, I didn't finish talking about my snow story. So I think snow is very pretty to look at, but I also get kind of anxious when it starts falling because it makes things very dangerous for driving. And I worry about everybody that I know that has to commute to and from work. Uh, I, I stress about that. I'm very afraid of, of getting a phone call that somebody got into an accident and that they're, they're not okay anymore. It's a strange thing to stress about because it's never happened to me. But, you know, driving, driving in snowy conditions or icy conditions at home, you could go from point A to point B that's 20 minutes away and you're going to see four or five cars in a ditch somewhere. They're not, I mean, it's probably, they're probably not seriously injured. Nobody's going very fast, but it's scary. Frightens me. I worry about people. As my mom says, I fret. Although I got it from her. She frets more than me. I, th I think these are going to be pretty good. I'm pretty excited. I'm almost out of gingerbread, so it's for the best that we're going to have some shortbread. Also, I think we're gonna get these nicely fitting onto one tray, which is exactly what I want, because I don't want to have to bake two trays of these. There we go. Perfect. I'm so excited to do my hair, guys. Uh, I can't, I, I, I would do it this week, but like I said, I have an office party to go to on Friday, and if I ruin my hair, then that would be kind of embarrassing. So I'm probably gonna do it, and I guess Monday is Christmas. I probably don't want to do it on Christmas. Maybe on Tuesday? Depends. We'll see. Next week sometime. Some, sometime next week, I'm going to come out with a dyeing my hair purple vlog. And hopefully it does not include my hair all falling out. <laughs> when we go up to visit, we live at Timmy's. Yeah. It's not like the most amazing food ever. It's just always really reliable. It's always there. And it's never terribly expensive unless they raise their prices since I left. But Timmy's was always just like affordable. If, if I wanted just like a fairly sugary muffin or like a quick cup of hot chocolate or tea or like a bagel, I would get their bagels for lunch sometimes. They have like this jalapeno bagel. Jalapeno agio, jalapeno agio? It's like a spicy pepper bagel, but it's like pretty spicy for something that you got at a fast food place. And uh, I, was, I was into that. I was all about that life. Or like they had this French toast bagel that you would get with like some strawberry cream cheese. Oh boy. That was good. That was, that was some enjoyable stuff. I used to get that. That was something that I would always get if I was flying somewhere. Um, I would get that at like airport Tim Hortons when I was on a flight. I used to fly more than I do now. Cause I, I flew down to America to visit quite a few times before I moved here. And then I, at least once I flew for a work trip. 
tried Dutch Bros Hot Chocolate. I actually had that last weekend, like a couple days ago. Um, it tasted exactly like, I think it tasted exactly like the, the Nestle or the Carnation stuff. Like it, it tasted very much like a packaged hot chocolate that I've had before, which wasn't bad. It just, it didn't really have its own unique character in any way. Okay, so we're almost, we can fit like one more little row of those and then get them in the oven. Oh no, I can't get them in the oven. I need to put their cherries on. We can't forget the cherries on. One, two, I think this is gonna be perfect. What is this? Get out of there. Is that pepper? How did you get in there? Go away. <laughs> I don't want pepper in my cookie. One more. I guess I could probably do like five more, but I don't wanna put another tray for like five cookies. My greatest dream in life right now is to one day work very hard and become successful enough that I can fly out to Canada to visit my family every year for Christmas. Uh, now I have to make some hot chocolate. I like Hammond's hot chocolate. I've never heard of Hammond's hot chocolate, Lana. Tim's steep tea with cream and sugar is my jam. I would always get it with milk and sugar. I would do, I would do, I would do milk and sugar in mine. Um, this is so nice. First time catching you live. Welcome, Chris, Chris, Ner, Chris Nera. I almost called you Christina because it reads like that, but it's not. Uh, snow is beautiful, but everything else about it sucks besides danger when it makes the entire town look soggy and sad. It is a little bit rough to like go walking around in. I'm not terribly coordinated. I have very poor balance. Um, partially it's just because I'm clumsy and partially it's because I had a lot of ear injuries as a child. And I think, I think I was, I think, I, I feel like I heard at least one point in my life that it was actually damaged. But I just have poor balance and I fall over a lot. And when you put me on something that's not stable, like ice or snow or a combination of the above, I'm going down. And <laughs> it hurts, you know? I get, I get bruises on my knees. Oh, man. It's the same reason why I'm a terrible Canadian. I don't like ice skating. Um, I don't like ice skating, and I've never tried roller skating, but I don't think I would do that either. Because, uh, you know, I'm just going to put this leftover dough right here. You're going to fit. You're going to fit, and you're going to like it. Okay. Franken cookie. But yeah, I, know, I, I can't do ice skating, and I've never tried roller skating because. I, I fall down. <laughs> I fall down a lot. I'm not coordinated enough to make it happen. Airport and happy holidays. Bagels don't get me started. Literally my favorite food, right? Yo, Sam. Mm. When I was in, when I lived in Canada, before I moved here, uh, the, the last place I lived before I moved here, I used to walk to, pretty, to a pretty nearby grocery store. I live within like a five, ten minute walk of a grocery store, so I would just walk to get my groceries. And that grocery store made bagels. They made in-house bagels. I don't know if they made them from scratch or not. I don't care. But their, their, all their bagels were really good, but their everything bagels were amazing. And I would get those like every week. I would have it for breakfast like every day. So good. And I haven't been able to find quite the same bagel love here in America. The Einstein Brothers bagels come pretty close, um, and you can get those at Costco, so they're cost effective. So sometimes um, I'll pick up, we'll get like a bag or two of those, and I'll have some of the Einstein Brothers everything bagels in my freezer, and that's fine. It's a good bagel. It's better than like a grocery store prepackaged bagel, but it's not, it's not that bagel from my young adulthood that I miss. And I think even if I went back, I don't think that grocery store's there anymore. It was like a family place, and I'm pretty sure they're gone. When you were younger, did you snow battle? Probably a little bit. Less snow battling, more igloo making. And by igloo, I mean a really terrible kind of ice fort. <laughs> um, snow forts, actually. Snow forts is what we called them. We would, I, I, made a, I made a lot of snowmen. I made a lot of snow forts. We would make them in our backyard and then play with our dog. And then we had a Malamute growing up. like a. She was a Malamute crossed with a German Shepherd. So she was just like a really friendly, cuddly, lovable, super licky, affectionate, northern looking dog that had like a lot of red in her fur she was um dumb she was very dumb she was not a smart dog some dogs are smart she was not one of them but she was so sweet her name was kisa it was kisa and i'm it's only just now occurring to me that the name kira for my cat is actually very close to that i don't know how that never occurred to me before um i'm slicing up some maraschino, maraschino cherries to go on top of the shortbread but kisa used to love playing in the snow and we would we would just uh go kind of nuts with that I feel like there's another question that I read that I had an answer to, but I've forgotten now. 
Uh, what are you making? Oh, we're just we're just putting some putting some maraschino cherries on top of some shortbread cookies before I bake them. I should just like press one little piece in top there. Sometimes they fall off post baking, but normally they kind of stick and it just like adds a little bit of color and extra texture and some flavorful interest to the cookie, if you will. Although I need to, yeah, I have enough. I have enough. I've cut these pretty small. This is like a little tiny chunk. And these are just like candied, candied cherries. But I always had them on top of circular shortbread cookies, which I think is how I've ended up doing this today. I, I think that's why, anyways. So Franken cookie can get two. <laughs> the the leftover dough cookie. Huh. Yeah, is Tim Hortons like Doug in Ohio? Doug, I've never been to Ohio and I've never heard of Doug, so I can't. I don't think I could tell you. Tim Hortons is like a. They sell, they're everywhere, so it's like a chain restaurant. They're very, they're everywhere in Canada, at least where I came from. There, were, there was always a Tim Hortons within like a five minute drive. And they sell coffee and hot drinks, so, you know, co your, your coffee, your hot chocolate. I think it's, I think it's kind of like Dunkin' Donuts, except not quite. They do sell donuts, they sell muffins and baked goods. Um, you can get like sandwiches and bagels and soups as well for lunch. It's very much like a breakfast and lunch place. Um, that's the kind of, they kind of sell like bakery and deli food with hot drinks and it's usually pretty affordable and they're just kind of ubiquitous. They're just kind of everywhere. Okay. So that one could use a little more. I cut way too many cherries, so I'm just going to kind of like, um, add a few more and then I'm probably going to eat some because these are delicious and they're yummy and I love them. Uh, yeah, close enough. Okay. Those need to go in. Bagels are really good. I like the onion bagel. Yo, same, same. Um, everything bagels with onion are like my favorite, which is weird because in most situations, I don't like eating onion. I think I need onion to be like desiccated, like dried onion, if I'm gonna be eating it. If it's like a, like a juicy, crunchy onion, like on a burger or something, I'll eat it. I won't be rude and like take it off, but I'm not gonna be happy about it. So those need to cook for, or bake for 12, to 15 minutes. So we'll set for 12 and then we'll check on it. In the meantime, I gotta clean some of this up. Actually, I gotta catch up and chat. When using bananas in baking, do they go black? Can consume within a couple days of most or can they last longer in a baked state? I think they last a little bit longer. I don't know, honestly. I don't bake a lot with bananas. I know this is kind of sacrilege, but I don't like banana bread. <laughs> Thank you so much for your video about the 7-3 Shadow Priest PVE. I just got back into WoW after years away and it's the best video I've seen. Thank you. I hope that, I hope that you get to use it and uh, bring on to the Shadow Priest family. I love hearing about people that are deciding to start Shadow Priest and having a lot of fun with it. I really think, I can't say it's more fun than other specs. I don't play other specs. I like Shadow Priest so much that I don't really branch out. I only play a Shadow Priest. And then if I'm PVPing, I play a Rusted Grid, which I'm doing a little bit more. I actually did an LFG3's pug the other night. Uh, just like a really low rated one because I know I'm very rusty. And I just need to get into the arena and play to kind of regain some of my awareness and uh, remember what I'm doing. So I, I pugged myself into like a very low CR, just chill, no voice kind of games. Pretending it was solo queue, you know. But it was fun, it was fun. I was kind of trolling them in, in party chat a little bit though. I picked up a bad habit of like messing with people. Not messing with them like playing pranks or being aggressive or mean or anything, but just acting like a little bit off and one and like trying to just, I don't know. It's, it's hard to describe, but it's really fun. Dunkin' Donuts is really good bagels too. I've actually never been to Dunkin' Donuts. I think I wanted to as a child because I saw them in like American movies. Um, and I was like, well, that looks good. I like donuts. I like donuts, especially when they have brightly colored sprinkles on them. What am I doing? Putting this away. Mm. But I don't know if I ever went. I must have, at least at some point. Did your whole family help decorate the tree as a kid? There was a good stretch of time where my mom did the tree herself to make sure it didn't shuck. We got a smaller tree upstairs. We would all decorate it together. I'm assuming that you came when they said they were, it was being decorated. Like if you did not show up, then you did not get to help. But if you would like, if I could like peel myself away from my Game Boy and my Archie comics long enough to come out and help my mom decorate the tree, then, uh, then yeah, we all get to help. It was never, we didn't like, we just had like our ornaments like the family ones, and then you know you throw some lights up and some like a like a garland around it, of, like sparkly stuff, and it was pretty straightforward. It didn't take us very long. Did you know that you can use a fragment of desire to stun the snails for the zoom achievement? I didn't. 
I had my Zoom achievement for a little bit now, so I haven't looked into it. My girlfriend has a Malamute German Shepherd. She looks like a Malamute in the winter and German Shepherd in the summer, but she is super smart. I miss that dog. She died a long time ago, but she was she was a really sweet baby. She like I remember her being cuter than she looked like in pictures. I don't think I I don't think um, the photos that I took when I was like ten or eleven of this dog really did her justice. Cause she doesn't she just looks like a dog, but I remember her being the cutest dog on the whole planet. Yeah, I miss her. She was very sweet and affectionate. And that's um, my current dog, Joker. He's cute. He is aggressively cute to the point that we get almost harassed. We get, we get, um, a lot of people want to talk about him, which is a perfectly natural, and I'll stop and talk to anybody about my dog. But we get stopped a lot, and I'm somebody who's just a little uncomfortable talking to people I don't know. So it's a little bit stressful. But we do it. It's fine. It's fine. It's good for me. So he's really cute. He's really smart. I, he's pretty smart. We've taught him some good tricks. But he's just got some um, neuroses that make him a difficult dog to live with. Uh, he's definitely kind of special needs. Uh, I love Holy, I made Holy. If I was going to be a healer, if I was going to be a PvE healer, Holy is what I would do for sure. If we're talking about Holy Priest, not Holy Paladins. I can't heal on plate. It just feels weird. We have Tim Hortons here. Granted, they're new and most chains are too stuck on the Starbucks. Oh, Ohioans are stuck on the Starbucks bandwagon. Yeah. I've heard that um, in places where Tim Hortons has ventured into America, it's just not getting much traction. And I'm not really surprised, like, if the niche is already kind of covered, I think a lot of the reason Tim Hortons is entrenched in Canada is kind of because of habit. And I heard they were losing some of their ground because their coffee, I don't know if this is true, but I heard that their coffee supplier at some point in the last 10 years got bought by McDonald's. So now if you wanted that really good Tim Hortons coffee, you just get McDonald's coffee instead. I know a lot of people in Canada prefer the McDonald's coffee. Like, even if they never eat fast food and they're not in about that hamburger and fry life, they will still get coffee from McDonald's because they're, they just have a really good coffee supplier that Tim Hortons no longer has access to. I don't know if that's true. I didn't drink coffee very much. Um, I'm more of a tea person. I'll move this so you can kind of get it, get it. Sorry. <laughs> ah! Oh no, I need to get it from the other side of the counter, but I'm tethered. Let me see if I can reach. It actually landed on its feet. It's kind of impressive. All right. Hang on. I'll fix that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it is amazing. It is amazing that this camera is still intact. I don't want to get an ex well, I mean, this is kind of the most expensive webcam. It's kind of like commercially available. But I'm glad that it seems to be pretty hardy because I drop it a lot. It gets knocked off stuff fairly frequently. I have it on a tripod, which you would think would be more stable than like the thing that it came with. Oh. Actually, I'm going to put a lot of this stuff in the dishwasher. I need to run it soon anyways. If Timmy's is like all the other chains, the suppliers are a different cross borders. The taste isn't the same. Oh, that's true. I didn't, I didn't even think of that, but you're right. Do you watch Riverdale? I saw it. Um, I saw the part that was on Netflix, so the first season. I have not been watching new stuff as it comes out. We don't subscribe to cable. We just have on-demand services like Netflix and like Amazon Prime. But I saw the season that was on Netflix. I was kind of unnerved at first because... Um, because... I was a big Archie Comics fan as a kid. I didn't have all of them, but the ones that I had, I would read religiously over and over and over again. So when I opened up Riverdale, I kind of expected it to just be like a shiny new version, like, a, like an adaptation of the Archie comics. And if you've seen Riverdale, you know that's not the case at all. It's basically a teen drama that is based on Archie comics characters, but the storylines are completely different, not even kind of the same, not even kind of the same tone. Why I, I didn't even use this. Um, but it was good. It was good. We watched the whole thing. It was, uh, parts of the writing were really cringy. Some of the lines, I'm just like, do you, do you really just make them say that? But it was all right. All right. Have you been to the tea house in the Chinese gardens in Portland? It's so worth the trip. Yes, I have. We did go there. Um, it's, just, it's run by the same people that do, I buy a lot of my tea from them. It's run by the Tao of Tea people. Um, I buy a lot of my tea from them, and actually some of the tea in my Amazon recommendations shop. 
which uh, shameless plug amazon.com slash hazelnuttygames slash shop. I want to say it's one of those things. But uh, yeah, their teas, their teas are really good and their tea rooms are really good. Um, I like getting their steamed buns. <laughs> Do a barrel roll. <laughs> Tell me the three best things about Shadow Priest. I've been meaning to level one, but I need coaxing. Okay. Best thing number one, it is, there is always, or it feels like there's always room for improvement. Um, your damage as a Shadow Priest is largely based on how good you are at staying in void form. And towards the end of void form, you have a lot of haste. And it's basically how efficient can you be with your buttons with that amount of haste while juggling other things that you may have to do. And if you can do it really well, you'll get a very late stack void form, which gives you a big extra damage boost. So basically, a couple times a fight, you get a new chance to try and beat your old record. And just kind of... You know, you're always, always trying to improve. And I'm sure that's the same with a lot of classes, but it's very clear with the void form structure of a Shadow Priest. And that, that structure makes it very adrenaline inducing when you're in late void form because your haste is really up, your globals are going real fast, you're just mashing all your buttons, you're trying to think ahead to make sure that you don't have to move, or trying to come up with apologies for your healers for when you don't move when you should have. And, uh, and it's just, it's very, it's very exciting. It's exciting and it's exhilarating to play. So I'd say that's number one is the adrenaline rush. Number two is that it looks real cool. Um, the new animations look really good. You, you like float up into the air and you burst into like purple and then you start spreading tentacles everywhere uh, when you go into void form. And I think aesthetically it's a very good class to play. I think it looks really neat. It's a very easy class fantasy to get into because it's very well defined. And third, pretty survivable. Um, it's, you've got a lot of self-healing with your vampiric touches. So once you've got all your dots out on something, if you have your dots on a lot of things, you're getting a lot of self-healing from that. You can self-heal yourself very well, and you can also help heal your raid group with vampiric embrace. It's a cooldown that you have that makes your damage heal you and your raid group, and that's pretty good healing. It's nice to feel like you're contributing in that way while still doing damage. Uh, and also, Dispersion is on a fairly short cooldown once you get all your artifact weapon points. And it's a pretty good thing to have handy as well, so I feel like I'm generally fairly tanky as a Shadow Priest. Downsides include low mobility. Um, you're not the fastest. I think we're pretty much in the bottom as far as speed goes next to Paladins. Um, so if you're trying to get from point A to point B or you're like running back from something, uh, your only speed boost is really body and soul, and that's only okay. It's not, you're not walking speed, actually. I think some classes, like warriors outside of combat, really only have heroic lead. But you're not super fast, and um, the, your instant AoE, if you're trying to cleave low health minions re really quickly, you can just forget about it. That's something for other people. Uh, your best skill as a Shadow Priest is sustained damage on two to three targets. Like, if you can get a Botanist fight, or Shavara, or um, certain parts of Argus, or Fellhounds, you've got like two dudes, they're spread out so other people can't cleave, uh, you are king of the world on those fights. It's amazing, it's super fun. Just caught the globe yeti thanks to your video. Great, Jeffrey. Have you tried Dodger's tea and why is there no hazel tea? Does Dodger have tea? I thought Dodger had coffee. I saw her selling coffee and cold brew. I did not see tea or else I would have bought it. <laughs> I absolutely would have bought tea if she was selling tea. Um, why is there no hazel tea? I would buy it. I think that would be a really good thing to make for, for like, if I was doing, I guess it's not really merch, but if I was gonna do a product of some sort, I, I would love to make a custom tea blend. Um, and, and sell it, along with like all, all of the info that you need to know to make a really perfect cup of tea. So I feel like good tea can add a lot to your life, assuming that you're accepting the risk of becoming addicted to caffeine if you are not already, because black tea, at least the kind that I drink, definitely has caffeine. If you're, if you're avoiding caffeine, then you're not gonna want it. <sighs> that was a wild ride. Allied race you're most excited for? 100% Void Elf. I'm so excited for Void Elf that I'm dyeing my hair purple next week, all of it, super purple. Roll purple. Going purple. I have a level 68 priest and a horde named Alliance Man. How rebellious of you. Ah, I have eight mage towers done, but I must have more. Dang, that is commitment. I thought about doing something like that, but I don't, like, for the mage tower, you actually have to learn other classes and know what they do. I did the priest, and then I was done. I might consider trying to do the Rester Druid one once I get some more gear on my, pre on my Druid. All right, so those are not, I need them to brown slightly on the edge. So now we start really, oh, that smells so good. I love shortbread. Um, keep an eye on those so I don't burn them. I like the cookbook. Oh, you got a new WoW hoodie? Keep calm and death strike from the Heroes of Azeroth store. Heroes of Azeroth store? 
I need to check that out. I've never heard of that, but you know, you know me. I love my WoW merch. Um, Dodgers coffee me. My brain farted a bit. Hazel tea, make it happen. If it happens, I will let you know. That is like top of my list for the kind of thing I would want to sell. And to be honest, if I ever, like once I get my channel the place I want it to be, I probably should start selling something because YouTube ads are not friendly to me lately. Um, what do you use weak auras and tell me when or just one? I most, I have both installed. I used to use both for PVP. Um, you can get by with just one or the other. Weak auras is the one that I think there are more pre-made auras for. There's no harm in having both installed though. There's no harm in it. Um, unless you're like really tight in hard drive space, in which case you should probably look into some more space. Oh, I've made a few things from it, so good. Yeah, that, that cookbook is golden. Do you live alone, Hazel? Just curious. No, I am married. I live with, I live with a married, a man that's married to me. Where did you get your sweater? I got this online from Forever 21 and they don't sell it anymore, which is very upsetting to me, or at least I couldn't find it. Maybe they can. Maybe, maybe you can, but I wanted to get it in more colors because I love it and it spawned a very short bout of me ordering more clothes online from them because I love this so much I figured other things might be good and the rest of the things were not good. I just got really lucky with this one. Like another minute. I really don't want to underbake those. Hazel, I burned my oven mitt the other day. How did you burn your oven mitt? Did you leave it on the stove? Many married females feel like they live a lot. I mean, that's a different issue. Um, it's okay, the Dispriest one, I have never done Fell Totem and I beat it first time. Okay, all right. Maybe I should play with it then. I bet with um, like our new levels of item level, like the Mage Towers came out a while ago, so maybe with new item levels, it will be easier. There's Azeroth stores on Facebook. It's not official Blizzard sanction. Oh, okay. I'm like allergic to Facebook, if, as you can probably tell if you follow my Facebook page and go, why does this girl never post anything? I never, I, I don't have a personal Facebook page and I don't use it a lot. So I definitely miss out on stuff like that. Hi, Hazel. Hello, Alexander. How are you doing today? See if you can DM me link. All right. If it's, or why did you burn it? I started rolling a Shadow Priest human the other day, my first ally too. Ooh, fun. You've got holes in your sweater? I sure do. It's like a cold shoulder sweater, but this one has such big cold shoulders that it's like cold, cold, cold biceps, chilly, chilly biceps sweater. But it's just really comfy and I feel like it drapes really nicely. Okay. All right. Perfect. They are just very slightly dark on the edges. I'm not going to touch those until they have fully cooled, but I am going to move them onto a, actually, I'm going to put two cooling trays side by side, side, so that they're like fully supported because these, these are very narrow trays. So sometimes things like sort of like slope over the edge. Here, I'm going to take you on a very careful flying adventure to see the cookies. I'm holding onto this with both hands. This is a cookie flyover. Okay, so the, the cherries look a little bit wonky, mostly in places where I added multiple cherries. You've got, uh, what does the talent dominant mind do? I've never taken it or seen somebody with it. Honestly, I couldn't tell you, it's not good. <laughs> it has something to do with your dominant mind. It has something to do with mind control. I don't know. I, I, like, you don't even see it in PvP, really, because most people are going to take Mind Bomb. I went to pull food from the oven, and the glove touched the eye. It scared me all. You should make the Goblin Shortbread cookies. I did. <laughs> we did that on a baking stream. You missed it. We made some snickerdoodles after all the talk in the last stream. They didn't last long. I'm kind of excited for those to cool down so I can have some, both because I love shortbread and also because this morning was one of those mornings where I'm like, in the kitchen making my tea, looking for breakfast. I'm like, well, do I make like some oatmeal? I can make some peanut butter toast, fry up an egg, or I could just eat a gingerbread cookie and then wait until the baking stream and then eat more cookie. I mean, if it's instead of a meal, instead of in addition to a meal, it's still even though to a calorie neutral, right? <laughs> it's not how that works. Mm. Man, I said I was gonna clean. Didn't get as far as I wanted to. All right, so I think I'm done. I think I'm done. We have a full tray of cookies. We have eggnog in the fridge. And I think I am gone until Friday. I'm gonna be extra fancy on Friday because Friday is the day of that office party and I have to leave like right after the stream. 
So I'm going to need to like do my hair and makeup and get in a dress or something before the stream. So it's going to be, it's going to be fancy pants Friday. If any of you remember that. Um, and uh, as far as videos, I don't have anything ready to go, but I'm going <laughs> to get to work. Um, my plans, my rough and tentative plans for like this week and next week, um, videos that I want to do, I want to do one going over every piece of advice I have for reducing your loading screen time for people that are still having problems with that. I want to do one talking about end of expansion goals, just like different things that you can kind of set yourself to occupy your time if you want to stay subscribed, but you've run out of things to do. And then um, I, I never did a making golden 735, so I want to go over the, the, my, the ways that I like to make golden 735 right now. So that's kind of like my plan, but I don't have an exact date for when any of that's going to be out because I need to get started on it and I have not been moving very quickly. Um, taking my laptop on vacation so I can catch the live stream, I'll be in the same time zone as Hazel. All right, so thank you guys for coming. I'm gonna, um, should I eat a cookie? No, those need to sit, they need to sit. Thanks for coming, I'm gonna go. Um, I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.